Hi, my name is Glenda Cooper. I'm from City University of London's Journalism Department and I'm going to be talking today about how we've used live journalism in the classroom um, to build trust. So I'm part of an ongoing research project with um, my research partner um, Catherine Adams of NTU um, called News on Stage and it's looking at the new field of live journalism where journalists and theatre makers are brought together to investigate new ways of storytelling. Although in some ways live journalism is not new at all. Um, if we go back to things like the town crier and um, the way that news was once told. Um, we've looked at how journalism and theatre can help build trust, uh, which has fallen by a big, um, big amount in recent years. Um, trust and journalism is a big part of social cohesion and the public agenda. And the role of journalists is important. Um, both in communities, but also what Usher calls uh, the conveners of social experience. And in journalism research, there's been a particular interest in recent years in what has been called the audience turn. This idea of engagement with the audience in various ways, but also the idea of reciprocity, that this is not a one-way uh, ticket when it comes to journalism, that audiences uh, need to be um, involved in various different ways. And one of the ways that this has um, transpired is the growth of live journalism around the world. So th things like Black Box in, um, in Finland, Pop Up in the um, US, uh, Creative Storytelling Workshop in South Africa, and Debedi in Amsterdam. And there's also, with the growth of live journalism, this idea of a journalism as a, what Bernbaum calls a created creative space. But that is, um, pretty contentious um, for, uh, for various reasons that I'll talk about um, later. So as part of the News on Stage research project, so far we've put on two online events because of the pandemic and uh, next month we have our first face-to-face -face, um, event planned um, at the Wandsworth Fringe called the News Cabaret. So that's how we've been looking at uh, News on Stage bringing journalists and theatre makers together um, in the real world. But we also felt very strongly that there was a space for bringing journalism and theatre together in education. We wanted to see how we could bring this practice into the classroom to look at uh, novel ways of storytelling and also different ways of discussing um, truth, trust, ethics and core uh, journalistic uh, values. And so we worked with a playwright called George Pitcher, who wrote um, a play set in the newsroom of an imaginary um, UK-based news aggregator. And the play itself um, was a mixture of scripted and unscripted. And um, part of the unscripted was a series of editorial meetings, news conferences, um, which would explore news values and priorities um, using um, improvisation, and also audience participation by um, the students. So um, this was performed twice at City earlier in the year um, from scratch uh, through uh, two half day workshops, um, uh, replacing their normal classes. And we had some very sort of clear like sort of learning outcomes here um, to understand the role of aggregators, uh, to consider news values and priorities, look at the problem of journalism, explore like sort of different roles in newsrooms and also the financial pressures on newsrooms. So um, here's a screen grab um, from uh, the, our, our event, one of our workshops. Um, as I say, unfortunately, because of the COVID pandemic, originally we'd have liked to have done this face to face, but we had to do it um, via Teams in the end. And so what did we do? Um, well, this is a two week process. Um, first of all, what we did a week before the actual workshop, we gave out the script so that the students um, could look at that. We also had a preparatory workshop where we talked about uh, news conferences, uh, what news aggregators such as Huffington Post are and how they work, and looked at the idea of how you'd come up for stories uh, for news conferences. Um, what we also did was we um, gave out very specific roles for the students. So for example, and we said to one of them, um, you're a political reporter who your contacts uh, mainly with the Conservative Party. 
Um, another one was a science editor who was desperate to write about something that wasn't the pandemic. It was really important for us to have detailed biographies for the students because um, the more it felt like role play um, for them, um, it felt safer. So um, it was like sort of, it wasn't them making particular judgments or um, they weren't having dis, um, debates or arguments with other students as themselves. They were having it as the role of the journalist, whether science editor, you know, entertainment correspondent, business editor, sports editor, um, and that made it feel much more safe for them. Um, so how did it work um, on the actual day itself? Well, we started off with an introduction and a, sort of an explanation of what we were going to do and a reminder of the learning outcomes. Then the students uh, were put into small breakout rooms in their um, particular uh, type of journalists that they were doing. So the entertainment reporters were put together, political reporters, and they had time to go through news aggregators and also mainstream media websites such as The Guardian, The Mail, uh, to look at what the, the really big stories of the day were. So they could think about what they would be bringing to news conferences as a, sort of as a political editor, what they would have to argue for, um, and particularly in relation to a news aggregator. Then um, they came back into the main room where we performed the play, which took about um, 40, uh, 40 minutes which, um, as I say, was partly scripted and partly unscripted. The news conferences within it were unscripted. Um, and then at the end, um, we had a discussion both with George Pitcher, the playwright, and also a general discussion about what they felt that they had learned from this. Um, it was important, actually, it was very interesting that um, the students looked at the stories of the day, and that actually brought up some really interesting questions. For example, on the day we did it, um, there was a big story in the tabloids about um, Meghan Markle having worn earrings that had been given to her um, by uh, the Saudi crown prince. Um, there was also a story about glow-in-the-dark sharks that um, caught the interest of quite a few. And we also had an interesting discussion that I'll talk about where one student uh, wanted to do a very um, sort of um, sceptical story about Covid. So um, what did the likes of the students say um, about um, this particular approach? Well, actually, it was um, it was really good. 80% um, of them said it was either extremely or very interesting from um, the uh, sort of Qualtrics feedback that we got back afterwards. Um, I should say in the two workshops, there were probably uh, between 17 and 20 in each of the two workshops. Uh, what they talked about was saying that they found insight, they, many of them enjoyed playing the role of an actor and felt that um, they had more understanding about what the conversations in newsrooms um, are like. These were first year students, so um, many of them hadn't ever been in a newsroom and didn't understand before this what news conferences were like or indeed what news aggregators were like. But these are the kind of jobs that they are likely to go into their first job. Um, there was like sort of some um, sadness, I guess, that um, some of them felt that it would have been much better if we were um, doing this face to face rather than um, rather than having to do it via Teams, which I think is a you know is a um, a really valid point here. Um, and because of that, some of them felt um, uncomfortable about whether they were doing news uh, a journalism. Um, class or whether they were doing a drama class and that's something that I think we need to bear in mind. What were the kind of things that the students said they learned? Well um, they said they understood much more what a news aggregator um, actually does um, so that while some aggregators uh, you know are automated actually there are others such as HuffPost um, which had real dis um, discussion around what stories end up where. Um, the idea, which is absolutely vital with journalism, that um, there's competition between stories, um, the, that you may end up doing stories that you don't feel so passionate about in journalism. Um, as I say, I have put down, I did not learn anything. There were, like, sort of, there were a couple who um, did still feel like, sort of, um, that this wasn't for them. And actually, I think there's an interesting point, as I mentioned earlier, um, 
creativity in journalism is something that a lot of people feel very uneasy about. Journalism is seen as a social science, and although um, creativity is part of storytelling in journalism, is one that is often uh, resisted. Um, so how useful was it um, as a way of understanding journalism? As you can see, about 60% um, thought that it was very um, useful. Um, they like sort of, again, uh, what was interesting was that they and the students felt that it allowed themselves to contextualize um, the learning that they'd been doing and this idea of immersing themselves in a character um, helps create the reality of a newsroom and again there was a feeling of safety because they were playing a part not being themselves that they could immerse themselves more um, sort of um, again some people felt it would have been better to do it in person there's nothing we could do about this and uh, one student did say that um, they would have preferred to uh, see actors doing this rather than having to do it themselves. Um, we also asked the students what other issues um, would lend themselves to this kind of approach in journalism and what kind of action would they take afterwards. Um, and actually they came up with some really interesting um, ideas about, um, particularly it goes to show the nervousness that um, that journalism students have about having to actually interview people face to face. These were first years, so they hadn't had very much experience, but um, a lot of them talked about this like sort of idea about maybe they could role play interviews um, so that they could learn, you know, how to approach people, which is such a key part of journalism um, and feel more confident uh, about it. Um, and also um, to think about the ethical questions about how you interview people as well, particularly those in extreme or difficult circumstances, which is obviously a key part of a journalism uh, role. Um, another student said um, that, um, that they would have liked to have seen something uh, much more specifically about underrepresentation of certain groups in the newsroom. And actually what was one of the, inter the interesting things in one of the workshops, there was very much a discussion um, sparked by um, the Meghan Markle story um, about uh, white privilege in the newsroom and about the representation of groups generally in the newsroom. Um, when it came to like, sort of what action they would take afterwards, um, actually very few of them said they would take action, but that's probably um, because we hadn't asked them specifically about that in um, the class itself. Um, I think, although I, I was um, very taken by one of the students who wanted to know much more about glow in the dark sharks, which had been one of the stories that we had covered. So in conclusion, uh, what did we find at the beginning of this project, which we plan to do again next year when we hopefully can do it face to face to gather more data and come to firmer conclusions. Um, I think even in these particular two workshops, we could see that like theatricality and playfulness can inspire students to um, in, to produce quality work. And this role play, this um, use of both scripted and unscripted drama did help them with this. Um, I say there was a need to overcome the resistance to creativity in journalism, which can see be seen as a problematic, a sort of a challenge to journalistic um, norms such as objectivity. Um, it allowed students a safe space to debate thorny, difficult, ethical issues that they hadn't thought about before, um, both about what they saw as news values, what stories should be at the top of a news agenda, what shouldn't be, and um, if you're arguing for a story, what kind of ethical uh, questions you have to take on board. As I say, um, it also allowed, um, because we did the news conference, um, but also the breakout rooms of four, it did allow for sort of both teamwork, for people to show leadership and also a safe space again for a debate um, that didn't feel personal. Um, it's interesting though, because obviously these students were first years who had never really sort of had the opportunity to meet each other and make those bonds. So actually doing a sort of a, a communal activity like this, I think did help to build sort of the idea of trust, um, inclusivity, and community. And because, as I say, the, um, the way that we did it allowed for people to um, work in teams, allowed 
people to show leadership as sort of news editors, I think this could be applied beyond journalism to other type of students. So thank you for watching. Um, any questions, thoughts or discussions, please email me at glenda.cooper.1 uh, at city.ac.uk.